on the table. Yeah, on his dad was going to be on the table. Oh, okay. 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 See, I didn't realize that. I thought it was on. Oh, wow. But something weird happened to where the drink on that guy, that guy is only born in line because of the way she ran. Ah, uh, okay. There's some weird. Oh, wow. My mom was drinking this. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. Well, I haven't talked to Mike ever since he moved. Yeah. He lives down in, I haven't seen his house, someone down in Marlboro, I think. I no idea. I know. Yeah, no, they moved probably, well, it was right after Justin's graduation last year. So it's been about a year. I don't know. She's been coming over there ever since the other things. Yeah, she had purchased. I think we're opening up the accessory.
today where we feel like we could do a first resolution for a ballot issue for November, that we're prepared with what we need to do that. The advantage to that would be that we wouldn't have to have a second a special board meeting in July. We could pass the second resolution at our regular July meeting. If we're not at a point today where we can do that, that's fine. We we'll just have to do the first one at our regular July board meeting and then schedule a special meeting prior to July 31st. So just some things that I think for us to consider as we can as we look at November. As we took a look, we got a, uh, the election disc from the Board of Elections here, and it showed like the last 20 elections, I think. And what it does is it breaks it down by voter, their birth date, unless they were a registered voter prior to some point in the early 1980s, you didn't have to provide a birth date. So there's, there was about 100, a little over 100 in both elections that fell into that category, so we couldn't clump them into an age group. But we know that they're at least, as we believe, 46 years old is probably a good estimate or older. When we take a look at that, and it, this is just strictly who voted. Obviously, the Board of Elections doesn't say which way people vote. It's just who has voted. When we take a look just specifically at November from last year, and again in May this past year, what we see is that voters aged 65 to 100 only account for 22% in each election of the people that are actually showing up to vote. I think there's this perception, and again, it, and I would say this, this is a brief analysis, this is not some very in-depth, scientifically based research, and there's assumptions that are made. But we're making an assumption that most people age 65 to 100 are probably not working. Those are probably the people that fall into the category of fixed income and other things that we hear about. But outside of that assumption, there may be people within that category that don't meet those criteria, and there may be people at a younger age that do. But if we take a look at this, that population, there are only 22% of the voters show up to the polls. And so as we look at that and we consider things like earned income tax, the advantage of an earned income tax is that it doesn't affect people that are on fixed income. And so as we look at this, I, we would suggest that that's probably not the way we want to go because the big effect that comes with that earned income tax really affects only a small amount of the people that show up and vote for us. And so if we got 78% of our voters that are turning out that are what we would consider to be traditionally working age, for most working age people, an earned income tax or an income tax would probably mean more money that they would be paying per year as opposed to the traditional property tax base levies. We have uh, 5,640 registered voters, I believe is what the Board of Elections told us. Back in November, we had 3,151 of them vote. A little under 50, 50, or a little over 50 percent, rather. And in May, we had 1,768 vote. I think that was a, a little bit over a 30 percent turnout. When we take a look a little further, and there's many ways that these results could be analyzed, and I've provided you with a copy of those, and I did leave some of those over by the door uh, in, for, for everybody else to see. We have a small percentage of voters that are turning out between the ages of 18 and 30. In November last year, that equated to 7% of the actual people that voted. In May, it equated to 6%. Uh, so the majority of these people that are showing up to vote are people that would be considered working age and many of them that would be considered to be people that have kids in the school system here. They would be of the age of having children in school if they have children. So as we look at moving forward with what to do with the levy as we target things and try to decide what approach to take, it's probably going to be advantageous to us to take our school family list and compare them to the voter list, which we did last fall. We did that in November, but we did it from the standpoint of 
doing a targeted mailing from the levy committee to get parents who were not registered to vote to register. But I think we probably need to take it a step further and take a look at families that are here in the building and who is the one who's not registered to vote still, but two, who's regularly not showing up to vote and try to understand why that is, try to encourage them to get out and vote. Also to target that 18 through 30 population. You know, we have a lot of people, we have some that fall into that group that are actively trying to form this Waterloo Alumni Association. And so somehow to engage that group more. And there's probably many other ways that we can analyze this data, and I'm sure the levy committee will as they move forward with whatever has to happen for November. But those are just a few brief, brief things to consider, especially as we decide what to put on a ballot. It would appear that an income tax is not the answer for us. Do you, do you remember how many uh, families were not registered when we sent that one? Yeah, it was like, uh, that mailing went on to like, I want to say 300 <laughs> different people or something like that, that if I remember right. 200 and 300, yeah. I couldn't remember exactly which one. 230 for some reason sticks in my mind, yeah. but maybe. That very well may be correct. I know it was somewhere in that range. So uh, so that's just the, the brief analysis. We do have the disc. We can go back and look at past years. We can break down stuff further. I want to thank Todd here for taking the time to do the analysis that you have there in front of you. He's the one that put all of that together and broke it out and created the different things. Just on those charts so that you know what those stand for, the red line on these graphs is just the age. So that corresponds right down to the numbers that are on, that are below there. The green are the actual numbers of voters that correspond to that age. And that all goes back to that first sheet, which is just the breakdown. So at our uh, two board meetings ago, we had a discussion briefly out here as we did a presentation on what we should do as we move forward. And there was some talk about, have we cut enough? Have we got to the point where we just need to let the state come in, do what needs to be done, because we don't want to cut any more to arm our programs if we have to move forward and do additional cuts if we're not successful with the levy issue. So we did a little research to find out exactly what that would look like. And I briefly want to summarize this. I will say that we have invited uh, an individual from the Ohio Department of Education to our October board meeting to very, do a very in-depth presentation and answer questions not only for the board but for community and may choose to come and attend that evening on this whole process. But just for the board's knowledge here, we're going to be placed in the fiscal caution most likely this summer. Their timelines are not hard timelines, so they said it would most likely be this summer because the revised forecast that we presented back to them that you approved, I believe it was in May, and that we submitted shows us having a projected deficit, not for this upcoming fiscal year, but fiscal years that follow. After we get that, we have to submit a plan to the state auditor's office telling them how we plan to correct that deficit. If the only way that we plan to correct the deficit is to put a levy request on, then they will move us into fiscal watch. They don't consider that to be enough of a plan. When they move us into fiscal watch, what that means is that they will assign somebody from the ODE to come down here monthly and monitor our monthly expenses. If things continue to deteriorate, in their words, those are their words, to the point where we're out of options and in a deficit situation where we can't now pay bills, that type of situation, then the board has to pass a resolution certifying the auditor of the state to declare a deficit. If the auditor does agree after they come in and evaluate, they declare a deficit and then they place us into fiscal emergency. Once we're in fiscal emergency, there's an oversight commission that's appointed to oversee the district. Five members are part of that commission, a representative from the ODE, a representative from the Office of Budget and Management, 
and then three local members, one's appointed by the county auditor, one parent, and one appointed by the governor. That oversight commission holds monthly meetings just like the Board of Education will continue to do. They said like the board will meet one week, the oversight commission will meet the next week. They trump the board on financial matters. And they have the ability to open up contracts regardless of contractual timelines. The oversight commission does. Once you're in fiscal emergency, there also becomes the availability of what they call the solvency assistance fund, where they can advance your foundation payments, your state money. The program allows two years to pay the money back. Although I just read today in this current budget that case, Governor Kasich is supposed to sign tonight, that in certain cases that are approved, you can now have up to 10 years to pay it back. Um, there's no interest that's charged on what's borrowed. And in order to get out of fiscal emergency once you're in it, you have to be in the black for five years, and your forecast has to also show that you're going to be in the black for five years. So there's two, two criteria that have to be met. Uh, the representative that we talked to was very, um, very clear about no district wants to find themselves in this type of situation. While the district still has some input in the decisions that are made, this oversight commission really is the one that gets the final say on anything that's financial related. So like I mentioned, we will have a representative from the ODE here uh, in October. We've asked them to attend. It'll either be Leanne Sidley or uh, a gentleman, I forget his name at, at the moment, but one of the two of them will be here to go into greater detail about this and answer questions. So as we look at November, we wanted to present some scenarios. I, I apologize, you have a packet of these in front of you. Uh, these numbers are not the clearest on here because of this pink <coughs> problem that we have. But we wanted to show some different scenarios as far as what type of millage rate would take us out how far. So the, the first scenario that's here is very comparable size-wise to what we just had on in May. I think it ended up being 4.76 in May when the auditor county auditor verified the dollar amount. This one is for 4.75. And as you can see here, 4.75 would take the district through fiscal year 13 in the black. Uh, we are entering fiscal year 12 starting tomorrow, just to give you a point of reference there. So that would get us one additional year. If we take a look at five mills, Five mills actually gets us in the black through fiscal year 14. Six mills still only gets us in the black through fiscal year 14. We're a little better with the ending balance, but it doesn't carry us another year. Seven mills gets us past fiscal year into fiscal year 15 in the black. Eight is still at 15. And eight and a half gets us through fiscal year 16. Now, I want to make a note here. Why are we looking at all the way through fiscal year 16? We wanted to give you a point of reference as far as our five-year forecast goes. So fiscal years 12 through 16 are going to be the ones that are encompassed with our five-year forecast. So if we wanted to look at something that would, as we know it right now, keep us in the black, through fiscal year 16, the length of our five-year forecast, we're looking at a, a millage rate of eight and a half. So as we as we take a look at these these different these different things and consider what we've been through the past year here, consider the feedback that we've received not only through what the communities told us at the polls, but also at our different forums and stuff. Um, I think Todd and I are comfortable suggesting to you that we think that this should be, what, whatever the amount we decide on should be a continuing and not an emergency. We think it puts the district in a better position. 
to pass a or to put it forward and hopefully pass a continuing levy as opposed to one that has to be renewed every so many so many years. We think that the amount that would be appropriate for us to go back and ask for here in November is five mils. And, and we say that because it puts us very close to what we just asked for, which was, which was much lower than what we had asked for last fall. We think if we stand a chance to be able to get something to be supported, the smaller the amount is, the better that'll be. You know, we thought that last time, and we still lost by the same percentage at the polls as the first time. Uh, but we still believe that the smaller the amount, the greater the chance is that at the end of the day we'll be successful. And five mils, because that gets us out to two additional fiscal years through fiscal year 14, we have to jump all the way to seven mils to be able to get through fiscal year 15. So we think five is a good point uh, for us for us to be at. And then we have to pass two resolutions by July 31st. So again, we don't have to take any action today. I wanted to have some, wanted to present all of this, have some discussion on this. If it's clear that we're in the same place and we feel comfortable to vote on something today and put forth the resolution, then we have what we need to do that. If it's clear that we need some more time to think this through and have further discussion, then we can bring it back again at the July 14th meeting and then as many times as we need to after that as long as we get two resolutions in prior to July 31st. So uh, I guess with that being said, I, Todd, do you have any comments you want to add to that? No. Yeah, I will, I will say... I like to make a comment that I, and Andy and I talked about this yesterday, but I just found out about it. Um, and this, the budget was passed, and it's a two-year budget. However, I found out yesterday that the governor is going to start working on a school funding plan for the 2013 year budget. So and I told Andy, maybe you're aware of that they're having these regional meetings, and the OSBA said that they would be bringing the, the lady who is the governor's assistant for education to those meetings to discuss that. And I was asked and accepted uh, a committee that's going to meet with the governor or the governor's people, they don't know yet who, on the 28th. Of July in Columbus for input on what he wants to change the school funding. So it's just crazy. Everything is uh, could be up there, and it would be. They said the OSBA people said that they would, if there was an increase based on his funding, they would pass a mini budget. So we may get more money, or we may get less. But I thought it was pretty well written in stone with what happened for two years when they passed the budget and now they're going to have work on his, his idea for school funding. Yeah, we, he's, uh, like Andy said, he's supposed to sign it tonight. And, and so hopefully it'll go into effect tonight. We have the numbers. It, actually, and I'm going to bring those over because I haven't been able to confirm them, but based off of our best knowledge with what had been presented before, it looks like between what was initially proposed from the governor and what's now been finalized, and the, the governor and a, the governor the governor's initial proposal is important because that's what our revised five-year forecast was based off of those initial numbers. I, I believe it was about a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars to the positive for us over the course of those two years. It was like uh, the, it was a smaller amount in year one than it was in year two, almost by two to one. Uh, but we'll have all of that stuff firmed up and, and give you more details on that in our July 14th meeting. But it, in the scope of where it was versus where it stands now, we're in a better position than we initially were. Although when you look at it compared to what the final verdict is, compared to where we currently stood this year, we're still in a loss. The other thing I'll mention, and we don't have a lot of detail on this, but just for what it's worth, um, 
as you know, because we have this meeting to close out all of these financials, it appears, and we, Todd's going to do a further breakdown of this to find out the exact details of where all these savings came from. But from our forecast to where we actually closed out, uh, we were about $261,000 better than we thought we would be. And uh, we attribute close to 80000 of that to additional state foundation money that came in this past year, and the other 183000 to different cost-saving things that we had done that added up once Todd actually ran all the final numbers. So, so we're, we're looking a little bit better there, too, but we, we don't really have all the until he, he just got those numbers this morning, so until we have time to actually break it down, we couldn't tell you where every detail of that came from. Uh, anything on that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, so that's what we know. Any, any comments on this or questions or discussion you want to have? To me, it looks like if we wanted to try to get out through fiscal year, 16, we would have to go, it's going to take pretty much, it's going to take pretty much every bit of that here. Um, And if we wanted to try to go out and just do fiscal year 15, it's going to take between a little less than seven, right around seven. I mean, to me, I think that I, I like the idea. I agree with the idea of sticking around the five mills to get out past 14. That's the direction I think. I agree. I think we need to keep it as low as we can to go get out at least through 14. Uh, getting through 13 isn't really doing a whole lot of good at this point. And, and you're only talking one more mill. So, um, not even quarter of a So, we can do that. I mean, it's, it's not going to be easy anyway, but at least if we can keep it as low as we can and do a continuing, then at least we've got that on our, under our belts so we can get that passed and then we can work from there. So then it'll be okay if we go ahead and recommend a resolution then to do a, a five mil continuing levy for November? Okay. okay. We have it part of that packet that I gave you. There it is. The, towards the back of your packet. It's uh, it's actually the one that at the top says a resolution determining to submit the electors of the Waterloo Local School District. If you look on the bottom of that third line to the right, it says current expenses instead of an operating deficit. You see where it says current expenses? That's the one that we will, that will be recommending here. I guess, is everybody okay with the idea of a uh, continuing versus the emergency? I think so. I think, um, I mean, we went with eight before, and that didn't work. And then we went with 4.76 in an emergency, and it didn't seem to affect them one way or the other. So I think we need to go with the continuing so that we can, I mean, that's my thoughts on it, so that we aren't, collect, aren't collecting it whenever we're not even, when I mean, people aren't are paying for it, so we're not collecting it anymore. So if we continue, we're supposed to be collecting the money. Is there any better chance to get anything of passing? Well, I mean, we dropped the millage right on the we last We dropped the millage, plus we changed it to emergency. Right. We didn't change anything. Yeah, but we gained like 8% or whatever. I don't think we gained that much, do we? Uh, it went from uh, 6832 to 6238. So 6%. 6%. Well, I think, I mean, that's my thoughts. I mean, the only thing that I see on the emergency, I think, and this is just my thought process. The emergency works because then in five years, we, we need additional money in five years, plus we have to pass the emergency. Right. We do it the emergency. Right. However, the emergency doesn't count against 24. However, we're not using However, we're not, we're not, we're not seeing appreciation right. in real estate, but that's yeah. we're not in Thank you. 
and like you said, there's not going to be any valuation increases that I'm really seeing yeah, in the short term. So, people don't even pay attention to that. At least my thoughts on. Well, right. No, but it helps us. It directly helps us. It does. We're at the twenty mil floor, and the real estate is appreciating. We right. keep getting small. But we're not that far off. Right. We're just just over. We're just a hair over. So, okay. and if we were going to be applicable anymore, okay. at least in the short term, of course. Do you believe? Mm -hmm. I like the negative. Andy. Yeah. I don't like any of it. I wish it would have passed last November. Okay, so I go ahead and recommend this resolution here. That's okay. So I'm going to recommend the resolution determining to submit to the electors of the Water and Local School District the question of levying an additional tax for the purpose of current expenses pursuant to ORC section 5705.21 for five mills for a continuing period of time. Okay, can I have a motion to um, accept the resolution for uh, continuing levy at five mills on the purpose of current expenses? So Second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Bob? Yes. Wigglesley? Tom? Yes. Rosatera? Yes. Perchip? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, I have some other uh, items here. Personnel recommended issue a one-year limited contract to Nicole English as high school administrative secretary, effective with the 11-12 school year. Step zero, 224 days. Terms and conditions as outlined in the administrative secretary contract. I want to make one note here. Uh, as you know, Pat Halliburton has resigned and is leaving us, and even though it's not officially retired yet, will be in a few years and we wish her nothing but the best that she moves forward with whatever she does. Nicole, currently, as you know, Nicole has been functioning as our attendance secretary, um, used her payment partially was through the county with attendance officer fees that we get and we have to use for that purpose or to lose them, uh, but not fully in that position part of it was what was coming out of our general expenses. With moving her into this position, we do not plan on replacing the position she's leaving. So there will be a savings that we'll recognize there for what that's worth. So we're basically going from one and a half secretaries in the high school office to one. And we believe that it's going to handle that in the With the reorganization of how we're how we're going to do that. Okay, now we have a motion to issue a one-year limited contract to the Next is to recommend the resignation of Paul Woodard as middle school principal and basketball coach, effective at the end of the 10-11 school year, contingent upon his official hiring as superintendent of the Newton Falls School District on July 14, 2011. I wanted to uh, just read you a portion of his, of his letter here. He said he wants to thank the Waterloo School Board, the Waterloo staff, students, and community for their support over the last six years. He was great and miss everybody. He's going to be a big loss for us. He's, he's done a great job. As you know, well known, he's you know, from the community, has strong ties in this community, has done a fantastic job as our middle school principal. And I'm certain that he's got nothing but a great, bright future ahead of him in his new role at Newton Falls. And that would definitely be a big loss for Waterloo. And so I thank Paul for all that he's done here over his tenure at Waterloo. Okay, can I have a motion to accept the resignation of Paul Wood as the principal and basketball coach? Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Just I'd like just to echo what Andy said about Paul. He's graduated from Waterloo and was the point guard on one of the basketball teams. He uh, was at Crestwood for a while, did a great job up there as a coach, uh, administrator. Well, 
I agree. That's what he, he went to one of these superintendents, so he knows what he's getting to. Uh, good for me. Any other questions for me? Bob? Bob? Yes. Wigglesy? Yes. John? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Richard? Yes. Motion passed. Commander Operations we recommend to enter into a three year dream with foreign fire equipment incorporating for the maintenance of our portable fire extinguishers and fire systems. Just a note on this I don't, I don't believe we've entered into a long term contract with them before. They have been at $2.75 per extinguisher we have, and we have about 100 roughly. We received some other competitive bids for this that came in around $2. And when Warren came out to meet with us, they dropped theirs down to a dollar twenty-five. So we went from two seventy-five to a dollar twenty-five if we would lock in for three years, and we do not believe that we're going to find anything cheaper than that. So that's why I would recommend that at this time. Okay, I have a motion to enter into a three-year agreement with Warren Fire Equipment for the maintenance of fire extinguishers. So moved. Recommend to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Waterloo Education Association in regards to the tutor seniority. Okay, I have a motion to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the WA and with the tutor seniority. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Bob? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Gump? Yes. Pussetary? Yes. Perchek? Yes. Motion passes. Recommend entering into a memorandum of understanding with the Waterloo Education Association in regards to the district media specialist position. Okay, I have a motion to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the VA for the district media specialist position. So moved. Second. I'll second. Any questions or comments? Welcome. Hot. Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Yeah. Dumb? Yes. Pusateri? Yes. Perchek? Yes. Yeah. Motion passed. Recommend to approve the agreement between the Waterloo School, Local School District, and Eastman and Smith LTD to join the new Portage County Legal Consortium. Just a comment on this. This is something new here in our county. It's not new to the state. I think Stark County has something similar to this. But we have six school districts in Portage County that have come together to pool resources to have an attorney that works for those districts. And it'll be a good cost savings. Uh, for us and these other districts with what we'll be able to be offered with the price that we've locked in at, it should save us. We've, we've been averaging legal fees uh, probably somewhere in the mid $30,000 range over the last 10 years when you look at it. Um, and this year is no different. We're probably close to 40 or a little bit more with our arbitration we have and negotiations and stuff. This will lock us in at $20,000 for just about every service that we that we use outside of our policy development. So we think that this will be a quality person that they brought in through Eastman and Smith to work with in another way that we'll be able to save some money for the district. So, and I, I want to mention here too, not that he watches this stuff, but Brent Minnie, who we have been using through Pepper and Wagner for a number of years, has done and continues to do a fantastic job for us. And if we ever need, and for any reason, with something that doesn't fall into this agreement, we still have the ability to work with him. And he'll still develop our policies because that's not part of the agreement as needed. Um, but for what it's worth, uh, his, his work has been top notch for us. And we're, we're appreciative of that. This is no reflection on him. Now, a motion to approve the agreement between Warren and Local School District and Eastman Smith for the New Portage County Legal Consultant. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? I said, is this is this a one year? It's a one year. It's every year. It's every year. Okay. We're, we um, we're entering into the first year with the hopes that it'll go okay. So, yeah, we're okay. just locked in for a year. Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Off. Yes. Whittlesey. Yeah. Gum. Yes. Pusateri. Yes. Perchek. Yes. Motion passes. Recommend to adopt the following board policies. 
entertain a motion to adopt the following board policies. So moved. Second. Oh, second. Any questions or comments? Roll uh, Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Tom? Yes. Wilson Terry? Yes. Perchick? Yes. The motion passed. Recommend to approve the following board policy. Uh, just to mention on this, the reason this was not included in the group last time was this policy after it was crafted for us by Brent had to be reviewed by a licensed dietitian to meet the criteria set up through this federal law. So we did get that reviewed. Um, Jennifer Hirsch from Crestwood actually helped us out. She was, she's their food director and actually the one that's going to be splitting the service with her vendor. And she did this um, on her own just to help us and we took a look at it. It was okay with this so. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the following board policy as listed? So moved. Second? I'll second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Hot? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. John? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Perch? Yes. yes. Motion passed. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. We have donations for the end of the year. We have two donations to be accepted as listed. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the following donations as listed? So moved. I'll second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Hawk? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Gunn? Yes. Pussetary? Yes. Perchett? Yes. So moved. Motion passes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next item is recommended through the following funds and associated revenue and expenditure accounts. This fund is uh, consortium through the Forest County Education Service Center. Uh, this stimulus money, and we really don't know what those are until the end of the year since they are fiscal agent. They expect those funds. So they notify us toward the end of the year, and then I turn over to you. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the following funds and associated revenue and expenditure accounts? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Hot? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Gum? Yes. Pussy Terry? Yes. Purchase? Yes. Motion passed. I laid out in front of you this afternoon um, the amended permit appropriations for this current fiscal year 11. Uh, just a few words on that. Um, our appropriations for this year are approximately 5.75% lower than what they were last year in the general fund. And of course, that should, should be a, a great surprise based on the reductions that we've made uh, this year. Uh, but with that being said, part of that was, part of that 5.75% reduction was uh, offset by the additional state fiscal stabilization funds that we received, uh, which is out of fund 532. But um, even with that, the general fund still came in about $330,000 already lower in our expenditures for this current fiscal year versus what they were last year. So, I have a motion to approve the amended appropriations for fund level for fiscal year 11. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Local? Hot? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Yeah. John? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Motion passed. Next item, recommend the temporary appropriations at the fund level for fiscal year 12. And that's the good to start expenditures tomorrow. Okay. Motion to approve temporary appropriations at the fund level for fiscal year 12. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Hawk? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Gum? Yes. Pussy there? Yes. Perfect. Yes. yes. Motion passes. Next item is recommendation to approve the following advances. Fiscal year 11 as listed. Okay. We have a motion to approve the following advances for fiscal year 11. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Just say that those will be advanced back. One comes in for first of the third list, so I'm going to look back to the general fund. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Hawk? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Gum? Yes. Wilson Terry? Yes. Perchick? Yes. Motion passes. 
Next item is recommended approval of Ohio casualty for property fleet insurance. I think for fiscal year 12. Did I forget in the state? I have a motion to approve Ohio casualty for property fleet insurance for each. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? That's not much less than mine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Yes. Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Come? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Motion passes. Last item is recommend to approve Ohio casualty for district liability insurance. Effective for district 12. For the amounts of coverage listed and the premium. Have a motion to approve Ohio casualty? From district liability insurance for 2011 2012. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? I, I do have a, a breakdown of the coverage if anybody wishes to see it. Okay. Anything else? Opa? Pop? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Come? Yes. What's the theory? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Motion has it. So what I have. Okay. Thank you. I have a motion to join. Okay. What's the line? I, uh, I'm aware of that. I can't. I will not be able to join you. Okay. Okay. Um, I know we still have three members. Anybody else can do the job? Okay. Any of you? Oh. <laughs> God willing, huh? Yeah. Okay. So we're still good with that? Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Come mm -hmm. in. Okay. We never do it. No one opposes it. Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you. I think you should be done. I'm like, it's different without that. I know. <laughs> but I'm like, wait a minute.